please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. I, a poor, miserable sinner, plead guilty before God of all sins. I have lived as if God did not matter and as if I mattered most. My Lord's name I have not honored as I should. My worship and prayers have faltered. I have not let his love have its way with me, and so my love for others has failed. There are those whom I have hurt and those whom I have failed to help. My thoughts and desires have been soiled with sin. Is this your sincere confession? I am sorry for all my sins, and I ask for grace that I may do better. Amen. As you believe, so let it be. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May he, he who began this good work in you bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. The peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. be with you. Let us pray. O oh, blessed Lord, since we cannot count on anything we have done, give us grace to count on Christ in his redeeming work upon the cross. As we delight in his grace, so give us humility to receive your generosity without offense and trust in your mercy alone for our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our service of the word for this morning begins with an Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 55. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, 
Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from Philippians chapter 1. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel, so that it may become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. For I know through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but will, with full co- courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in, in my body, whether my life, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet, which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to part and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, uh, but of your salvation, and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in some conflict that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia. By grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. And after agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. 
So they went. Going out again with the six, about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You, go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now, when those hired first, they thought that they would receive more. But each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, am I, doing you, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and we ask the children to stay in their seat for the children's message. So boys and girls, I'm going to retell the story of uh, the parable that Jesus uh, just told about the workers in the vineyard. Let's say I have uh, an apple tree in my backyard, and uh, it's full of apples, and I need them picked, and I ask you if you would pick the apples for me for $100. Would you do that? Just climb a ladder, pick all the apples. Would you do that for $100? I bet you would too. Now, let's say you worked for an hour and had many of the apples picked, and then... Uh, you just had a little bit left to go and someone else came along and worked the last five minutes with you. Probably glad to have a little bit of help. And then when you were finished and you came to me and that person who had just worked the last five minutes came to me and I gave them a hundred dollars. And then you stepped up and uh, put out your hand for me to pay you and I gave you a hundred dollars. I bet you might think to yourself or even say out loud, that's not fair. I worked a whole hour and this last person worked only five minutes and we got paid the same thing. That's not fair. Didn't I agree with you to pay you $100 for picking my apples? I think I did. It's not really unfair, it's really just generous on my part. I was fair to you. I was just more than fair uh, to the person who only worked five minutes. You see, this story is about people in the church. Some people, like me, I've been part of the church all of my life. For all 63 years of my life, I have been part of the church and a believer in Jesus. And in the day that I die, because of what Jesus did, God's going to take me to heaven to be with him forever. And I've been, a, I've been looking forward to that all my life. But do you know there are people who maybe only believe, not their whole life, but maybe only a couple years or a couple months or a couple days or maybe even only a couple of hours that they believed in Jesus. But what happens when they die? They get heaven too. Even though they only came into the faith in maybe the last moments of their life, Jesus has forgiven them. And some people might well say that that isn't fair, but the truth is it's generous. Is generous because God loves all of us. He sent Jesus to die, and you know what? That's the one thing that wasn't fair. Jesus was without sin, and yet he died to forgive me and provide all who believe in him forgiveness and eternal life. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love you've shown us in Jesus. We thank you that uh, you are generous with us in mercy, that you forgive us all our sins and provide us peace with God. I pray that you would continue to work faith in my heart so that on the day uh, that uh, you have assigned, you may call me to be with yourself forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue with our hymn of the day, Hark the Voice of Jesus. All in. and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Our meditation this morning based upon the gospel reading you heard a moment ago, this uh, parable that Jesus tells of the workers in the vineyard. Dear Christian friends, perhaps you've heard of this thing called the Protestant work ethic gets its name uh, because it comes out of uh, the time of the Reformation and it is uh, linked to uh, this whole notion of the fact that we are given different vocations from God, that there aren't only uh, holy things that happen in monasteries, but there are holy things that happen at your workplace as you fulfill your job. There are holy things that happen in your home as you fulfill your vocation of, of parent or child, sibling. This Protestant work ethic is, in, by some, is, is give it credit for fostering the whole uh, 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 
system that we find ourselves in of capitalism. And it has a bearing in our lives. We're, we're taught to work hard, to do what you do well, and you'll be rewarded. And part of that is probably saving and not spending more than you earn. It's part of the fabric of who we are as American people. But it may surprise you at first hearing to tell you that this Protestant work ethic, at least in one regards, has no place in the kingdom of God. It has no place, no bearing in us being right with God. The work was not placed upon your shoulders and mine, but upon Jesus. And he paid its price. He did the work in full on the cross, winning our forgiveness, earning our peace with God through his suffering, death, and resurrection. None of the work was yours or mine. It all belonged to Jesus. Humankind, in their sinfulness, has a difficulty grasping onto that. That we're saved by grace and not by works. That this thing called salvation is God's free gift to us in Jesus Christ. This works righteousness that it's called finds its way into the fabric of all religions outside of Christianity, that it's up to you to make yourself right with God. But even within Christianity, there is the inclination to believe that this can't be free. It can't be God's gifts. I must have to be able to do something. Jesus must have left this unfinished and I've got to somehow finish it. It's one of the things that differentiates of the Christian church in a great way. But this parable today that's before us illustrates the point that it's not about our work, but it's about the Master's grace. You heard, this, you heard the parable read. You heard me retell it with the children. But this is not about you and I striving to make ourselves right with God. It's about what He has fully and freely done for us in Jesus Christ. It's about the generosity of the Master. But you see, this has a way of working into our lives as well. Even those of us who understand God's grace, who understand that his forgiveness is a free gift to us in Jesus Christ. And it works into our lives, maybe not so overtly as works righteousness, but nonetheless it does. And it does it this way. We have the tendency to compare ourselves to others. Even in the church, sometimes I am the standard. And others don't measure up to me and what I have done. Don't come to church as often. They don't volunteer like I do. They don't give like I do. We have the tendency to say. Sometimes the standard is other people. I'm not a Christian. 
like they are. I fall far too short of what I know that I should be. It's then that we must again remind us that the kingdom of God is not based upon merit. It is management by mercy, by grace, by forgiveness, by God's free gift in Jesus Christ. This past week, I was called to go to a hospital in St. Louis to a man on his deathbed. I think, I'm not certain, I think he was aware. His eyebrows moved. His eyelids moved when I spoke to him of his sin. And it's free answer in Jesus Christ. If he was able to hear and the Spirit was able to do his work, this man was brought into the vineyard, into the kingdom. And he received not what was due him according to his merit, but he received what was due him by the mercy of God in Jesus Christ. Forgiven and at peace with God perhaps in the last moments of his life, but just as free, just as based upon mercy as is your standing in mine in the kingdom of God. I think it can be missed. And so I'll point it out to you what I believe to be the main point of this parable. For me, the main point of this parable is not about when the people came and worked in the kingdom. It's really not even about what they received, a full day's pay. What this parable for me is mainly about is this, who absorbed the cost of the generosity that the owner of the vineyard showed? Paying some a full day's wage when all they had done was worked an hour. Who absorbed the cost? Now the owner of the vineyard did. Who absorbed the cost of your salvation and mine? The owner of the vineyard. Jesus himself. In his body. On a tree. For you and me. God manages his church. Not based on merit. But on mercy the mercy he has shown you and me in Jesus Christ. And now he calls you and me to be people of mercy. People who don't look down on others because of their station or of their race or of their place or of their address or the color of their skin. But who look upon them as one for whom Christ gave himself Look upon all as those who God has shown mercy because that's who he is. And that's who he's called us to be as well. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Please rise. And now may the peace that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, you have promised to hear the prayers of your people, and so we come to you this day offering you petitions and supplications for all manner and needs of people. You have invited us to seek your face and to call upon you while you are near. Lord, grant to us such confidence in your grace and favor that we seek your wisdom, walk in your ways, and delight in your gift of salvation with thanksgiving in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We delight in dwelling in your house, O Lord. Bless your church and those who minister to us in your name. Guide them to preach faithfully the whole counsel of God so that we will be steadfast in faith in the face of temptation, threat, and trial. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have placed in our ears your word and in our hearts your spirit, O Lord. Grant that we learn to follow your word and live holy and honorable lives that reflect your goodness and show forth the fruit of the Spirit in all we say and do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are our light and our salvation, and in you we rest our fears. Lord, grant your aid, comfort, and strength to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Be with the sick for whom we pray this day especially George Roberts, Cindy Leaker, Angela and Greg Stork, Larry and Elaine Davis, Bob Koning, Edith Jost, Angela Grassi, Steve and Debbie Siegel, and for the persecuted church around the world. Heal them in abundance with your will and sustain them through their afflictions until the perfect healing comes in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your power is greater than all, and your mercy is without limit. Lord, look with compassion upon your world of violence and terror. Bless those who govern here and everywhere, that they protect the weak, promote the cause of virtue, administer justice to the criminal, and act with mercy towards those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have given us a place at your son's table and grace to receive his very body and blood. Lord, grant that we come with repentance and faith to receive all that Christ has accomplished for our salvation in this blessed communion with the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have shown us generosity greater than we deserve, O Lord. Silence our complaints when we should question your mercy and teach us to be satisfied by your grace and all that we need for this mortal life and find contentment in God's promises of, of the life to come. Teach us to rejoice over every sinner who repents and for everyone who comes to you in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
And finally, we ask that you be with Blair Elaine Elise Wood this afternoon as she is baptized. Raise her in your faith that she may come to know you in all that she says and does, and bless this church as we raise this child in the faith. All these and whatever other things we need, we ask you to grant us in the name of Jesus our Lord. And to your hands, O gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.